These are the prophecies of Otrok Vyacheslav Krishnanikov, who came down from heaven with special message for humanity and proved his divinity the way the prophets of all times of biblical times did so, by miraculously healing countless people and by leaving behind prophecies, many of which have already happened. This documentary is not an attempt to convince you to believe in his prophecies. It has come to you to only inform you about these prophecies. And if one day you see some of them happening, then and then only I hope you will take his words to heart to guide you through the very dramatic chapters of history that may unfold in front of our eyes within our lifetime. For example, some of the heralding events that will come before the most unbelievable piece of drama unfolds are that entire England will be submerged in water. It will happen gradually. In, be in the beginning, people will watch in disbelief, but eventually, as entire portions of it get submerged beyond return, they will believe that, yes, our land is disappearing, and all of them will be evacuated to Russia. The fate of parts of the Baltic region will be similar, but will come instantly. In a day with beautiful weather, without any prior warning, a huge wave will mount to the shores and turn entire regions into sand dunes. In America, what Rok Vyacheslav said, they will demolish by explosion two similar looking buildings and the Statue of Liberty. About this statue, he said it will be like this. First, it will start shaking, trembling, and then it will appear as if it moved in front, and then it will collapse. But he did not descend from heaven to just channel curious news headlines from the future. Instead, he came to urge us to look deep into our soul, see for ourselves what does it mean to be a human actually, because it seems we'll have to really dig to the deepest portions of ourselves and draw resources to be able to take the difficult exams that may await us. The prophecies that you will hear about are translated direct from video material of his own mother speaking. I will try my best to never add any twist to the prophecies, even at the places where I may hold slightly different views. Besides the most amazing cosmic saga of how our Earth will turn into paradise very soon, according to his words, there will be other interesting stuff, like, for example, Atlantis lying in relatively good condition and almost fully functional in the Pacific Ocean, not the Atlantic, and the large dinosaurs that we call prehistoric still living comfortably in huge cavities below the Earth's surface. Slava, that's how his mother called him, was born in a very ordinary family in the region of the Ural Mountains, Russia. He was literally a toddler when the first cases of miraculous healing around him occurred, but it wasn't till his first school days when the heavy and steady flow of people did not start. He could see the bodies of people around better than an X-ray machine. With great ease and without the need of any tuning or ritual, he could see what other people are doing at the moment, miles away, or what would happen in a few days or a few years. Since early childhood, he would talk as if he had the education and sophistication of an adult person. And in his always friendly conversation, he was always telling people, literally begging them to regularly go to church, be pious, 
and always pray and attend confessions. And then so many people in his presence reported the very same thing. They would feel inside their bodies as if some very gentle thread is uh, pulling them at places where they would have ailments. And then the ailments would simply disappear, even when they were stamped as incurable by the so-called doctors. So no surprise that the simple home of the family was always full of visitors and they were becoming more and more. Sometimes that would continue through the night as well. People would come from far away, very tired, often with very serious medical problems. And it continues to be so years now after his death. People come to pray. They take few stones from his grave and the water that has spent some time over his remains on the grave and they still continue to report miraculous cures. People with serious problems continue to come and ring the doorbell of his mother even during night time and she continues to accept people for free if all these stones and blessed water for free listen to them clean after them. This is not like one of those standard spiritual centers where you will be offered scented mists that cost five times the usual shop price just because they are blessed to balance all chakras forever and immediately or some CDs for courses that will give you an insight into hidden esoteric truths. Instead, it is simple and profound, and his mother is almost as much as hero as him because she spends practically her entire day at the cemetery and that is freezingly cold almost all year round. When he was 10 years old, once Slava told his parents that towards the end of March he will get very sick and die. They were in total shock and fear and asked him why, how, what is this? He explained to them that mankind is betraying God much faster than expected and that is why God decided to shorten this time period. He was sent here, he came into flesh to give details about the end times and tell people what to do. The plan was that in the beginning he would be a doctor and then a monk. But since people betray God so fast, this time is now shorter and he has to go away earlier. I find this extremely important because he implies that even divine plans can change. In the new age terms that would mean shifting into a different timeline. And that is why I beg you again to carefully remember what I said in the beginning. Wait that all the other prophecies get fulfilled and then you take serious precaution about the events that I will describe now shortly. And I would like to cover two more points before going direct to the description of the end days, which to many people may seem very terrible. Before the Olympic Games in London 2012, there were, well, not prophecies, but so to say leakage of information that there is a plan to stage alien landing and then stage all this Antichrist thing at that point. And indeed on that day when the Olympic Games started, there were a couple of UFO sightings, well recorded in London. People recorded them with their cell phones. Terrific sound. So apparently there was some truth into all this story of staging an alien attack. But nothing major happened and we still remain in a relatively peaceful planet. Well, how can I call it peaceful? It is relatively peaceful if we are really in the end days. At least that much you will agree with me, I think. Now, what did the people who warned about the fake alien 
holographic images, whatever, what did they say afterwards? They explained that actually at that moment we went into a different, more peaceful timeline. Because too many people on the planet, they say, started getting interested in pure and godly life. All the biblical horrors of the end days will not happen to humanity. We don't need to go through them anymore. Maybe these people are right, I don't know. But the prophecies of Utrok Vyacheslav were made some 20 years ago. And they describe events that go perfectly along with the biblical description of the end times. So please kindly look around very well and see in which time are you living before you take any decisions based on any prophecies. First of all, when? Is the Antichrist supposed to come? Which year? That much Slava did not say direct, but he gave a few hints. First of all, he said that sometime around the time of Antichrist, Russia will have a game for one last time a pious ruler or king. And what he will do is tell on the TV all the truth about Gorbachev and Eltsin and what exactly part did they play in the controlled demolition of Russia. I mean the demolition of morals, church, infrastructure, and anything good, not just breaking it into pieces or smaller states. Now, this will be the first thing he does when he comes into power, and because it will come all of a sudden, these two, Gorbachev and Eltsin, will run for their lives like crazy. Now, this boat chaps, Gorbachev and Eltsin are elderly men at the moment. That means the Antichrist sad fiasco will have to be staged very soon. He also mentioned that his mother will live enough to see the Antichrist times. And about another relative unborn still at the time when Slava was alive, he mentioned that he will be in his teens. Now, as of today, that boy would be around 14. Now, let's review some of the events that will start occurring towards the end days. The East-West political tension will continue to escalate, never subside. There will be plenty of American troops all around the Russian borders, but it will never reach the point of an open war. But then the US-China relations will all of a sudden turn very bitter and it will be almost at the point of war. To solve the problem, the American government will use the tactic of distracting attention and will quickly organize a war between Russia and China. Or to be more precise, the forces that govern three of them, US, Russia and China, will organize it for the people. Russia will be very quickly defeated, which won't be very difficult at that point, because all its infrastructure would be mostly destroyed by that time. By the organized demolition that has been going on actually for centuries. The last one is a personal remark from me based on my survivor's documentary. Slava gave the following details. They would start simply switching off electricity so that nothing can function starting from the eastern parts of Russia and the Moscow will be the last one to remain without electricity. So it wouldn't be very difficult to defeat such an enemy and the country wouldn't have any army by then because the glorious Russian army, that's how Slava felt about it, would be then already transformed into groups for fast action. Fast action means disposing of uh, any social elements that do not agree with the established order. It seems that the Chinese will take over most of the territory of Russia and will quickly convert the Christian churches and the Muslim mosques into temples of the new faith, 
which happens to be compulsory. They will install dragons near, near the entries of the new temples that with blunt, low-pitch sounds will summon the newly converted for religious service. Near the dragons will hang the corpses of those who did not attend prayer on time. Another war that Slava mentioned was that of Israel. Israel would be attacked. And although its residents will show great bravery in defending the land they live on, they will lose. Those who take over it will greatly anger God with what they do to Jerusalem. Another war mentioned by Slava was a long one in the Caucasus regions of Asia. It would be simply endless. Endless until giant mudslides don't bury everything. prophecies, only these three wars are mentioned. This doesn't mean that they are the only ones, nor that they are the main ones. Moreover, Slava himself said that he will give out only limited information so that the enemy, the forces of the dark, won't be able to misuse the prophecies in making their devious plans. According to Slavo, all the nuclear traps that humanity has prepared for itself in the form of weapons and power stations is not the greatest stupid mistake of ours. There is even worse. And that's the problem with the cavities in Earth. Some of them existed from before, but they were not dangerous because originally the Earth was engineered to be a pleasant place to live. But since man added lots of extra cavities by extracting oil, ore, and many other things, without understanding the structure of the earth, as a result of all this, currently the full earth is very unstable. And Slava said that if it wasn't external angelic help, the full thing would easily fall apart because it's much more fragile than we imagine. Slava also mentioned that the full Black Sea will explode. Because on the top, yes, it is like a sea, there is a layer of water, but that is relatively, Slava said, thin compared to the very heavy gas-like substance that is below and that is produced by huge worm-like creatures that live there. And since the full Earth will be getting more and more unstable, this uh, highly inflammable substance from below will start leaking on the surface and eventually a huge explosion will happen. But it will take time, Slava said, for the full sea to burn. It will burn for some time and there will be smaller explosions as well. After that, after this is over, there will be no more sea over there. No more waters and part of the coastal line will be absolutely devastated. This burning will even reach the skies where man has already placed lots of garbage gases, dangerous inflammable gases, and they will burn as well. So the first big problem will be terrible earthquakes and lots of uh, these holes will start opening at places many people alive will fall in them even. This calamity in itself will render lots of the world's infrastructure useless 
and that will give a great opportunity for all these sicknesses that have been prepared carefully for humanity over years to escape and start doing what they were supposed to do. According to Slava, lots of lives will be lost, actually most of them during this transition to the new golden age, and uh, the majority of these losses will be due to these engineered sicknesses. The next big problem will be that water will start disappearing. Since man, Slava said, does not have the slightest clue where does water come and how does it circulate on the surface of the earth and below it, he has clogged beyond repair, at least beyond human repair, the passages that deliver water to earth. And because of that, at one point, in many regions, the water will simply disappear and in others, it will turn into some sort of smelly, nasty looking substance that resembles rotten blood. People will swallow it with great difficulty even after boiling it many, many times. And in the middle of all this, the Antichrist will land on Earth and offer people a solution to all their problems in exchange for a small favor. He will be greatly aided by the entertainment industry, which will of course present it as something extremely cool and fashionable. He will be a very highly skilled hypnotist and magician. With all kinds of tricks, he will convince the Christians that he is Jesus returning. At the same time, he will convince the Muslims that he is Muhammad returning. And the Buddhists will see Buddha in him. All that will be achieved with the help of very sophisticated hypnosis and holographic images. But still, Slava said that it will first start in the Buddhist communities this doubt to appear, well, wait a minute, Buddha, he wasn't really planning to come back, what is this all about? But in general, Slava said, the majority of the population will somehow or other accept his beastly sign on his forehead and hand. Something similar to implants, but much more powerful, because when even people try afterwards to extract it when they figure out that they have been scammed, they will be unable to do it. Even if they remove the actual device, if there will be such that we can see, still this black magic will be imprinted into like maybe each and every cell of their body, something of this sort. Others will accept it not because of fashion, but because they will be seeking cure from the terrible sicknesses. Slava said there will be boots, like small boots, in various locations over the towns and cities where everybody can enter and get healed from anything, like instantly. Healed and marked with the beastly sign. Slava described that there will be no shortage ever of devices that can give you the beastly sign absolutely for free at any time. There will be special supermarkets with very attractively looking foods and at the checkout you also get the sign if you want to check out and buy them. Curiously enough, Slava mentioned that some of the marked people in the beginning will try to give food to their unmarked relatives, some of the nice food that they have bought in the special supermarket. And even if they do so, the unmarked ones will not be able to eat it. Just even if they try to force it down their throat, they will uh, vomit it at the end. So in the beginning, there will be lots of discussions. Some will say, take the mark, others will say, don't take it and then some will take it and it will look pretty innocent in the beginning like taking credit cards that was also new once upon a time but then life will continue somewhat normally and nothing special will happen except uh, 
few funny eccentricities on the side of the bees, that he will want to change the symbols of the religions, that he will want to be worshipped instead of those old gods, which will be minor things for the modern people. And many of those who have hesitated should I take it or not will actually decide to take it after a few months because it will look like that those who take it are fine and are doing well financially and uh, in every other respect actually. And then once enough people fall into this trap, it will clap. Gradually the marked people will start becoming extremely nervous which will gradually turn into unbearable frustration and anger. It will become clear what is the membership of the 666 club all about, but it will be too late. There will be absolutely no way to cancel one's membership and people will be forced to live in a constant unbearable psychological turmoil. Some of them will try to find an outlet of their unbearable anger by directing it towards those people that they were calling stupid and backwards, the people who did not take up the membership. Some of them will organize even gangs to go around and hunt unmarked people and mark them by force. This will be going on for months before Jesus Christ does not put an end to all this nonsense. Basically, Slava warned that those who are really determined not to get the sign of the beast should avoid even highways because although the acceptance of the sign of the beast will be mostly voluntary, there will be cases when they will send out groups on the highways to stop cars and mark anybody who is not marked by force. And then Slava said that there will be families who will prefer to remain human, who will hide in the forest, but then their children will hear about the magical performances of the beast who will constantly travel the full planet with great speed and perform his magic all over the place. So the kids will hear about the tricks he shows and sometimes they will escape to see him. And those who personally visit his performances are also doomed. With great sadness, Slava could see in the future how his own mother would be at one point tempted to visit one of those performances. He said that the beast will come two or three times in the nearby city and with great difficulty she will manage to resist the temptation. But even after all this, there will be people who will prefer to remain human. They will remain human all the way through. Slava remarked that, that there will be more such uh, communities, islands of sanity, so to say, uh, in the East. In the Western countries, he said, will gain prevalence the feeling, the opinion, that this is not right, I don't really want it, but that there is no other way. Although the other way will be wide open for everybody. By the time the last ruler of Russia comes into power, which will be around the time of the Antichrist, there will be few thousand people that would have remained human and he will gather around himself. Now that may seem little, but we don't know few thousand out of how many alive, first of all, and second of all, how big would be the Russia by then, because as we heard, most of its territories will be taken over. Not all the regions of the world will be equally affected, in some it will be very bad, but others will basically suffer only from the lack of water in terms of disasters. Also, he told us that not all central governmental infrastructure will be completely converted to the dark side. And they will manage to maintain some research centers and laboratories that will work in favor of humanity till the end. For example, they will invent a device which will allow even ordinary humans to see this evil ghosts of the gang of the anti 
Christ with their real faces, something of the sort that under a certain spectrum of the light they may actually show while they are invisible to the normal human eye, something like that. Slava absolutely insisted that people should continue going to church and do confessions even in these extremely difficult times. Now, he was in an Orthodox Christian region, so he encouraged people to visit that type of church. But he specified that uh, one should search specifically for priests who have not yet converted to the new ways of worship and are still doing it the old way. For example, he said that there will be a group of scientists who will be very well informed what, and will understand everything what is happening and they will manage to escape the clutches of evil. There were remarks, vague remarks, that more or less the situation will be equal in all lands. So if this timeline really does happen to us, still it won't be that bad in the sense that it could be even worse, because there will be relatively unaffected regions where people will be allowed to remain human. And then the Savior, Jesus Christ, will come, which will certainly add lots of clarity to the situation, but it will not be the end of all problems. The forces of evil will be not yet completely destroyed. They will try to even openly enter in battles with the remaining humans. There will be still war, the sorcerers of the evil spirits against the crafts of the humans. As far as I understood, those high-tech crafts for the humans will be coming from the centers and laboratories of the good scientists who did not sell their souls. And as far as the sorcerers of the sorcerers, the evil ghosts, Slava explained that they are actually powered by diamonds. Basically, Otrok Vyacheslav came to tell us a very simple thing. Remain a human. Don't accept anything connected to the demoniac now, so that it doesn't drag you to accepting the beastly sign when the time comes. These are some examples of how the mass media and the fashion industry have trained millions to accept ghastly demoniac images as something normal. Another example is the widespread use of dirty and clean language of swearing. Slava said that this type of unclean speech is actually the speech normally used by evil spirits. And it has been introduced in the human society very recently by the fashion industry and the mass media. While those who associate themselves with angelic energies, angelic behavior, and everything else angelic, eventually they will live amongst angels or angel-like humans. Moscow it will gradually slide in one of those folds in the earth. From ground level only the star of Kremlin will continue to stick out for some time. For some time until Jesus Christ does not arrive and the moment Slav said, the, that's what he said, um, Jesus places his foot on the red square 
even that red star will collapse. But the time when the initial slide will occur, uh, the Russian government will go abroad and govern actually from Germany. Uh, maybe in the city of Bonn. His mother doesn't remember exactly the name of the city uh, exactly, but she was very surprised at that time. She said, is this really possible? The government of the biggest country to govern from abroad? Uh, but Slava said it doesn't really matter. All the countries won't be independent at that time anyway. All these national governments would be just uh, puppets at that point. So where are the headquarters? It won't even matter. And then finally, once people have decided very well for themselves on which side are they gonna be, the light or the dark, when they are well separated, then this last ruler of Russia, the righteous one, will appear and he will gather around himself the godly people. First of all, he will clean the previous government completely from those who have betrayed God. He will have no double standards and all his decisions, according to this prophecy, will be inspired by God. So my personal understanding is that he will be the last ruler of Russia because after that the, there will be no need of such institution of country. Basically, Slava's mother says that even after the arrival of Jesus Christ, there will be few last people who will betray him during the last war that will be fought against the UFOs of the demons. And it will be only after this last war is over that the rebuilding of the new art will start, directed by angels and the people, the really pious people who have survived this all, they will help on the ground. There will be lots to do, for example, to plant new special trees that grow very fast and purify everything. But Slava's mother, she says, I remain with the impression that uh, actually the last judgment will be after this war with the UFOs is over. Now, the situation with the, the preservation of Slava's prophecies is very strange. He lived so recently and we know absolutely very little of everything he said. Now, his parents, they were well aware of the miracles that started right from his birth. They understood very well he is not an ordinary child. But since they were very simple people, they are very simple people, they did not understand everything he said. So that's why his mother always tries to um, give his own words as much as she, can, she has heard. Actually, she heard a very little, very small fraction of all the details uh, Slava narrated to various people. Because she was always uh, just uh, like a housemaid. People come from far away, it is always freezing cold, so you have to make tea for them, yeah? You have to invite them, you have to always clean the house and uh, make sure everything is tidy for the constant flow of hundreds of people in their small home. This is actually not uh, a small job to do. So she said, I never heard a complete discussion. The bits that I'm telling you is uh, what I overheard while uh, serving and taking away the teacups. She is not some curious person that wanted to know everything, although sometimes she asked a few questions out of curiosity, but uh, she was always worried what will happen to her special child. She was always confused who is why is he so knowledgeable, although he is so small, and she was always, always afraid of for him. He told his parents he's gonna die just a few months before it happened. Uh, later on they found out that he told some group of ladies in the church maybe four years before he died. They were there and um, they saw that he's so sweet and knowledgeable mm -hmm. and exceptional and they asked him, hey small Slava, when you become big probably you will be very rich, huh? And he replied, oh yes, I will be extremely rich, but not the way you understand it. 
Also, I will depart at the age of 11, but my mother will live enough to see the times of the Antichrist. So, during all these years of accepting guests, maybe five of them were more active after he started going to school. Basically, his parents never thought that he would die like this all of a sudden and he will be always there, you know, to uh, give this knowledge when needed. And yes, his mother, she suggested that he writes a diary because uh, all this is very interesting and they did together write a diary which mysteriously disappeared at the time he died together with uh, a few locks of hairs that his father cut um, before he got buried and a few other personally connected objects with him. And that simply disappeared. Only a few pages are left about the dinosaurs. We are going to see them later. So this didn't work as well. And then his father, he loves him dearly, but he is just a person of very few words, very simple. Currently he just continues to bring these small stones that uh, are placed over his grave and uh, they spend some time over there. They apparently become holy because they cure really lots of people from serious sicknesses and solve uh, many other problems. People come with all kinds of terrible problems. So that is distributed for free and maybe it will look like a too simple setup. All this with the stones and people just coming and taking them and praying. But if we are realistic We'll have to admit that this absolutely simple setup has uh, cured more sicknesses than probably a huge hospital together with all its doctors and expenses and poisons. So we should always judge by the fruits, as Jesus said. The small stone is actually marble gravel. They decided to use this material because Slava said marble is like life alive and charged with properties of goodness. That's why evil spirits don't reside at places where there is lots of marble. And speaking about medicine, a few words about the future of this science. Gradually the medicines or the so-called medicines will be turning into something else more and more. As time passes by, it will transpire that the so-called medicines become more and more severely poisonous. Eventually, people will be forced to turn back and seek shamans and healers. But I did not understand, is this a regional prediction? Because uh, many of his uh, predictions appear to be so, just for uh, Russia or there will be such an awareness about the true face of the so-called medicine all over the world. Because I, I myself have lived in both worlds, the East uh, and the West, so I know them very well and I cannot fail to notice that in the East uh, already the majority of people are absolutely convinced that um, governments are ruthless criminal institutions. While here in the West I really noticed that actually the majority of people are you know, serious into politics and uh, defend some sort of political party and uh, there is such a general impression that uh, the government uh, represents the people or cares about them. So if all this is really about to happen with the mark of the beast, a lot of people in these regions, let's say uh, Russia and Eastern Europe, just when they hear about it, they will take to the forest and will want to have nothing to do with all this nonsense because everything that comes from the organized establishment is dangerous crime and there is just no point of even discussing anything because Gentlemen don't make deals with dangerous criminals, period. Well, people in the West will be, okay, let's see what they tell about this on TV and there will be discussion. I'm sure the TV, the hypnotic box, will tell you everything you need to know about it. And then if one watches TV, then 
doubts will start okay if i go to the forest then how will my children go to school you see i will spoil their future and while thinking like that the few short weeks and months will be gone and then they will just start stopping people on the highway and forcibly marking them <laughs> So being a simple lady, his mother heard about a school for special children who have psychic abilities and thought that maybe it will be good to enroll Slavik over there. And she mentioned it to him, he was not enthusiastic, but she insisted very much and he agreed because she insisted. After he was subjected to all kinds of tests, one of the ladies, part of the examining jury or commission, whatever you wish to call it, was kind enough to tell her the truth about the organization she works for. On a friendly basis, she explained to the mother that your son has the highest level of abilities, those of a prophet, and she's not sure how long are gonna they let him live, because one of the purposes of all these so-called communist Bolshevik revolution and the genocide later on orchestrated by Stalin, one of its true tasks was to physically eliminate anybody who had such abilities, plus everybody who maybe has them or may have them. After this jury commission finished examining the abilities of the small Slava, he gathered them all together and told them frankly, listen what all of you, all these aliens that you are talking to are not at all any aliens. They are most ordinary, low-grade evil spirits. That's what they are. As they were listening, the members of the jury started fading like flowers in the heat without water. The chief of the jury told the others, Did you all hear very well what did the Otrok say? Now what does it mean Otrok? Why do we call Slava Otrok Vyacheslav? Otrok simply means a child, an offspring. But it has become an archaic word nowadays, and one would hear it only in a church context, specifically when they want to underline the divine origins of somebody by birth. So it was this professor actually who first gave him this title. No. Some people ask, why did not Slava heal himself? Why did he allow to die after healing so many other people? I think the answer is pretty obvious. He clearly said months before he got sick that I will get terminally sick and he even specified the date and I will die. Obviously he was planning to do so. Although at some places one can read that he died from blood cancer, uh, in reality, when his mother went into details, he died from unidentified disease, initially similar to blood cancer. He was for some time in hospital, and he explained that he decided to come to this hospital because he had children to cure here. And even in his physically weakened condition, he did perform and did cure, cure few children during his stay. He also said that he will be coming to this hospital and curing kids even after he is dead, because that is needed. That hospital is practically serving a radiation dead zone, because in the vicinity there was a nuclear explosion, very similar, if not uh, of bigger magnitude than the famous one of Chernobyl. They decided not to advertise it too much in the 
mass media because they, so to say, took care of the waste uh, on time. How did they take care is the nasty stuff was put in a gigantic pit in the ground. Just poured over there years ago and now it starts uh, leaking. It is not secured. Especially children and adults are dying in great numbers, always seen. Uh, cancer, cancer of the blood mainly. It is truly one of the most dreadful places on earth. And a doctor who worked there all her life for many years in this hospital shared something interesting with his mother. She told her every day so many people die here from this radiation. But what I wonder all the time is how come the people who die are as if selected the most beautiful, most intelligent and most educated people. She was asking why does this radiation not work on the stupid ones? Why it is the cream of the society that this radiation affects on me? I would like to share a few of my thoughts in this regard in relation with my experience with yoga. As Yogani very well formulated it, it is really time to stop thinking that advancing in yoga and eventually reaching liberation and perfection is some sort of just only divine light or some change in your thinking. These are purely physical processes. He said it's 95, did he say 95 or 97% actual physical changes in your body that will allow you to perceive this higher reality, to perceive your higher self. These are not fantasies, these, these are absolutely tangible things. And also I have noticed that um, people who are born um, already with a plan, I mean the plans that we make before our physical birth, to lead a life that is more uh, tuned with the higher dimensions and with higher awareness of their central self, so to say, the eternal self that always resides in the astral, those people are very often geared with a body that uh, responds differently to the environment than the body of a person who will spend all his life eating fried potatoes and watching football. So apparently the observation of this doctor made in this hospital may hint that apparently radiation could affect mostly people who are geared to connect more to the astral planes. While at the same time it may not uh, do such a great damage to the bodies of people who for some reason have decided to spend this lifetime in a more confined space, basically attending to the bodily needs of this wonderful costume, the human body that they wear for a lifetime. And then people were asking me the same about Bruno Gröning. Why did he not heal, heal himself? He also died from something cancerous, something like that. After miraculously healing thousands that were coming on stretchers even, some of them were in such a bad condition that a wheelchair was not an option. They had to come on stretchers and just by listening to Bruno, they could after that carry their stretchers. If Bruno healed that type of people, why did not he heal himself? It's the same answer. Bruno Groening also clearly set his intention. It's time to leave. People collectively were not yet mature enough to accept him so he decided to leave. And those who are always asking why did Slava, Bruno and many others did not heal themselves will most probably always continue to ask because it is much easier than facing the truth. They run away from us. Collectively, we are simply pathetic.
Slava remained an exemplary small boy throughout his short life, no exceptions. He was never mischievous, never rebellious behavior, like punching, like many other boys do in school. Although when some other kids were nasty to him, he said that he almost felt like punching one of them, but he did not do it because human should be never hurt or hit, period. So being an exemplary little boy, he was so excited when time for him came that he starts going to school. But his excitement was very short-lived. Very soon he discovered that what he is being taught is far from truth. Very far from truth. For example, history, he just could not believe it how astonishingly ignorant, profoundly ignorant mankind can be about its past. Sometimes the stories found in the textbooks seemed so hilarious to him that he laughed a long time out loud. He loved to tell episodes of the true history to the numerous visitors. Uh, that's what his mother says she overheard now and then while serving them tea. But since she is not herself interested in history, she did not pay close attention to them. If I myself lived in Russia, I don't, but if I did, I would probably devote some time to trying to trace some people who did talk with him and did hear some stories, if they still remember something. One story that was very funny for Slava was the so-called history of the dinosaurs. The biggest of them would have their eggs high as tall as a ten-storied building. So even a single one of these can chew up many people. He said, what? Extinct millions of years ago? They're living right now in healthy large populations in those um, underground cavities of the earth. The few pages that survived from Slava's diary are about dinosaurs. He was putting lots of minor details in his diary about them, like where is uh, their nervous system, that they have many hearts and things like that. And his mother even asked him, why such detail about these dinosaurs? And he explained that at the time when those giant folds will start appear on Earth, devouring infrastructure and people, at that time, there will be pathways open to the underground cavities where the dinosaurs live and some of them will come on the surface and start mixing with people. That will not be very advantageous for the people who meet the carnivorous types, who will be nearly powerless in fighting them because they will have um, numerous hearts inside their body a couple of blood systems circulating independently, so it will be very hard to fight them back. He also said that dinosaurs are actually highly evolved and very intelligent beings. Somewhat like the Sasquatch, for example, who are reported to appear, disappear and be somewhat magical. So dinosaurs are also able to function in those dimensions and they even evolved even more by staying in the underground conditions. While with the humans on the surface, we actually devolved and we no longer feel the environment around. It's an exception when a human feels the movement of energies around. But these dinosaurs, they do. According to Slava, the dinosaurs will roam the earth again for a very short time in some regions only during the end days. The dinosaurs won't be alone. Some of the giant worms that also live underground will come out in those times. The way they will hunt people is by hypnotizing them and then simply swallowing them. But if somebody is strong enough to be able to resist hypnosis, he can simply run away because these worms, their peculiarity is that they will stick only the upper part of their body from the ground. They will never come out entirely to chase a person. So if he doesn't get hypnotized, he can simply get out of their range easily.
Slava was equally impressed with the heights of knowledge that we have reached in astrophysics and pretty much every other science. His mother was very surprised when he told her that even the Earth is not some sort of madly spinning thing roaming around in the cosmos. And the cosmos is not at all as we imagine it. With great astonishment she asked him, but what about these rockets that fly all around the globe nowadays? He told her that to make a circle in the sky is different than flying all around. He said, we have crafts, vehicles that fly in the sky, but all they see when they go up or another will be a glowing surface, large one. He said that even if they reach as far as the moon, still they won't be able to see all of the earth. He said that theoretically, if one wants to see how our Earth looks like from far away and see everything that there is to it, one should be minimum at the distance of the Sun. But if the Earth is not a madly spinning ball, then what is it? What he tried to explain at that time, I don't know to her personally or in some other conversation, was quite complex and she doesn't feel that she got the full concept as such. So she remembered there was a structure in another structure and then other structures and then everything rests on some sort like a stalagmites, giant protrusions resembling elephant tusks and then this tusk like protrusions rest on some very dense water and since we the mankind have lately advanced so much in technology and science and everything we have finally reached the stage where so many people are satisfied with maximum three or four words long sentence to define the shape of the earth they walk on like it is flat or it is a ball. For this type of educated people, I will put it in their format. It is too difficult for you. Please note that these remarks about the shape of the earth are not meant in any way to inspire you to check out the flattered nonsense going on online, which should be called actually flat out spamming and scamming and trolling online. Most of it is total nonsense mixed with lies and it doesn't have a thing to do with any shape of the earth whatsoever. It is all about harassing people on internet, people that are there to inquire about the truth by the help with the alternative media. All you will find in this fashionable flat earth movement is insulting your intelligence with all kinds of lies and spam and if you try to um, have any normal conversation it will be always as if uh, they don't understand what are you talking about all this massive movement of internet trolling under various pretexts has been organized and paid with the sole purpose of confusing the people who are actually interested in the truth by mixing the truth found in the alternative media with all kinds of unbelievable nonsense. So all this trolling has been designed to stain the name of all alternative scientists, including the genuine flat earth people who might have as well touched some points exposing the problems of the mainstream astrophysics. If they indeed found and touched such points, which is actually a very healthy thing for the science, people will have hard time finding those truths as well amidst of all the garbage and intelligence insulting that is going on under the flag of flat earth. Now a bit more on cosmology. About the sun, Slava said that indeed it is very hot, but only on the outer surface, inside not so much. And yes, it can be compared to a ball of molten lava that is hardening at places. 
And as far as the mom, he didn't even want to discuss it so much. He said when different strange sights and things start appearing around the moon, better don't even look at them, go home, because it will be all devilish hologram. And the use of holographic images in general will be extensive. The Antichrist will show to people biblical images to convince them that he is the god, like the famous one with shifting a mountain. People will even go to touch this mountain to get sure it's true and they will feel something hard. About space travel, he said that yes, actually there were earthly crafts sent by people, they indeed were in outer space. But doing it in general is not a very good idea. Once a craft goes beyond the protective shield or belt of the Earth, I think in scientific terms it is called the Van Allen belt, some sort of unearthly crystal-like particles will stick to the craft and when it returns back to the Earth's atmosphere, they will multiply in the atmosphere already within the shield and will form something like an ice mesh or net that never melts that will eventually collapse on the earth and cause damage. That damage will be original only though but it will cause for some time very low temperatures reaching minus 200 degrees Celsius. Please know that, that uh, even if indeed crafts from Earth have been to faraway corners of outer space, this doesn't mean that the space missions that you hear about on TV actually exist. On the internet and on my VidMe channel you can find plenty of information that what we see on TV is uh, mostly or completely fake. And people have no clue what is actually going on. Uh, in space, and it is all financed with taxpayers' money. According to Slava, Atlantis was submerged, but not completely destroyed. He says it is in a relatively good condition, and most of its technology is still fully functional, maintained and operating. But the authorities have no intention at all to reveal to the public in general all this because if people see what kind of a devious technology is operating and by whom, they will understand the full truth about what's going on on Earth now. But according to Slava, although they have amazingly powerful technology, and plenty of evil plans in their heads how to use it, they are not going forward with their evil schemes for now because they are extremely afraid of Jesus Christ. Now, if all this is true, then it seems that when Atlantis got submerged, the good guys from Atlantis spread on Earth and started educating the simple tribal people inhabiting the surface, while the evil ones remained with the technology. You can find more about this topic specifically in the Survivors episode called Runes and Mummies and in my interview that I took from Peter Petrov. Slava said that the sunken Atlantis that still functions now with some sort of transparent glass-like corridors which allows humans to still maintain it. This is just uh, one of the centers of uh, the evil forces on Earth. The other two are somewhere in Tibet and uh, Lake Baikal. Baikal. Baikal will be the place from which most of the UFOs will start, take off, let's say. And uh, as far as Tibet, they have made some sort of devilish machinery like artificial intelligence computer, all programmed for evil, of course, which is extremely powerful and can, so to say, symbolically open even the skies. But although fully functional, 
again the evil spirits are afraid to use it, afraid from Jesus Christ. Slava said that he came as messenger from the divine to warn people. But how can the ordinary people be sure that somebody is indeed a divine messenger? Slava said, there were tricksters and magicians that the ordinary people took for saints. And also there were shamans and righteous godly healers whom actually the ordinary folks took to be black magicians. And yet there are other saints that don't even know themselves that they are saints because these are people leading simple lives, but in their heart they're extremely righteous. Honesty for them is a self-evident way of life, the only way of life. In their essence and quality, they are not different from the saints who perform miracles. But simply because they lead ordinary lives, they don't get canonized as saints. <laughs> that he came in our family, exactly. Once she even asked him, Slava, you are obviously some sort of a miraculous child and you always talk about God, you are so learned. Didn't you make some sort of mistake? Why didn't you get born in a family of priests, for example? That would be much more suitable. And he replied, No mother, I did not make any mistake. Actually, you belong to a very ancient clan where many special souls have taken birth. And he told her lots of amazing things about the brave souls that were born in their bloodline. But of course, the mother knew very little about all this because in Russia, as everywhere else, this modern system of naming was introduced. We are almost everywhere in all countries named in this way. We have family names that we inherit usually. But it was not like this in the past. In those times, one would get name or names by which he will know for sure to which clan and bloodline he belongs. His mother knew that she belonged to a very religious family. Her grandmother and grandfather were always praying, just literally day and night. They would never raise their voice, pray all night, always read the Bible, this type of people. But she knew very little of what was before that. She knew that they were forced to... Uh, not only... She knew, for example, that they were regularly changing by themselves their family name to avoid the constant prosecutions because um, the, their clan in the past relatively late accepted the Christianity. They belonged to the old faith for a longer period. So even after they were forced to change their names, they were still changing them again and again. Because as we reviewed in the survivors episode, in Russia, they were particularly stringent about destroying anybody who may remember about the old times. They had a good reason to do that if they wanted to establish the new way of life.
Slava once shared with his mother that his soul is indeed extremely ancient one, and then she started asking him about his true identity. He did not say much. He said that the Holy Trinity empowered him to come and give last warnings before the difficult trials of the last day start. And then she was asking more. She was asking why did the Holy Trinity need to give you powers? Didn't you have your own? And who are you exactly? But he never said. He said it's not yet time to know who am I exactly. One day, one day the monks in the Lavra, that's how it's called the central place of the Orthodox Christianity in Moscow, they will find this very old book with prophecies and over there I will be described in detail and that would be written long before I appeared. And then Slava said, not only in my homeland, but people all over the world will hear who was I actually. He said it won't be a small thing. For example, even Germans will be proud that I spent half of my life in their country because in his early childhood his family was for five years in Germany. He said that you, my family members, when you hear all that, will be very shocked, but after that you will be extremely proud. He also predicted some details that may surprise you in terms of how important and famous he will be at that time. For example, one of the numerous ecological disasters that will happen during the last turbulent days will be that the forces of evil will spill large amounts of oil, petrol in Iraq. It will totally poison the land, start circulating in the waters, spill in the sea, and they will somehow manage to clean it from the sea. But even after that, the waters that uh, would have been in touch with that poisonous oil will be so polluted that they will be causing harm just everywhere. There will be no technology available to solve this ecological problem. And then he said, they will bring, bring him and put his hand towards the water and he will help, he said. It will be quite miraculous indeed if this happens one day. And he also described a second similar occasion in China where there will be huge nuclear disaster or something like that, something of that sort where also no technology will be available for cleanup and um, they will bring him again but on that particular occasion he said i won't be able to help them it is not uncommon for the remains of the holy people to continue performing miracles So Slava appeared in an Orthodox Christian environment and he preached Orthodox Christianity. He encouraged people to go to Orthodox Church. So I decided to look into the, the way Orthodox Christians see him. Because there are still many monks who achieve higher state of consciousness, although sometimes in my videos I don't speak very politely about religion. The church still deserves some respect. So what I found is that really monks, serious, who are living lives in isolation and celibacy, who are really serious about their faith, they have been having holy visions about uh, Utrok Vyacheslav. They respect him. They accept him as messenger of God, many of them. And not only from Russia, even all the way like from Serbia, Orthodox monks would come and literally crawl all the way to his uh, grave. Like from the point that they took off the bus that took them to the cemetery, 
with every step they made, they fell down and paid obeis obeisances at the ground. That much holy they considered him. He fits the descriptions that are found in some Orthodox Christian books already that the last uh, prophet before the end times will be something like him. And many consider him to be that person indeed. Well, at the same time, the central lavra in Moscow, they're warning that he's not canonized, don't enroll in this cult. What cult? There is no cult as such, actually. But no matter how, what term they use, in essence, the society, because there are millions of religious people in Russia, they are putting pressure, they want him canonized, he has been faultless, he has been encouraging people to go to church and perform miracles, so many other things. And the explanation of the central authorities in response to this pressure is absolutely laughable. I read their official statements shame on them. It starts like this. One cannot get canonized uh, in the case of a child uh, when the witness is his only loving mother. So far so good. And then they continue writing that they went to the spot, to the place, to check what is the situation with uh, what they call cult. And they found, uh, quote, large amounts of people who have been miraculously cured. There were only two or three sentences about these uh, miracles. In their report themselves, they say that indeed the nature of the cure seems to be supernatural and maybe in some cases it can be nature cure because curing with stones has always been a tradition. This is so general and then no explanation. I mean, this sounds like a reason to get canonized to me, but that's all they write about uh, the miracles in their long report, which mostly consists of nonsense uh, sentences often contradicting each other. But only time will tell the truth. At least for those of us who hear about him now for the first time, while those who have been already cured by him and who have heard his prophecies before they happened, because many of them apparently happened, it seems they found out the truth about him already. Once his mother asked him, Slavik, how did actually Jesus Christ look like? And he showed her this particular image. He said, this is the closest to the real Jesus. <laughs> Slava came to us to deliver the message of hope, the message that our planet very soon will be transformed into a completely new, unrecognizably different place. The waters of the new earth, he said, will be so clear that one will be able to see even the smallest stone deep, deep on the bottom of every water reservoir. A new earth that is abundant with new trees, new fruits and new flowers of unimaginable beauty. A new type of man will live on this earth, wise and pure in heart. The buildings on the new earth, Slava said, will be made of gold. There will be so much of it. It will be abundant, not like now. And those who will 
live long enough to see this beautiful new earth will live through fire. But even in the most difficult times, Slava said, when the main problem will be that water will completely disappear, still by the mercy of God, some isolated communities will be able to grow food, while most of the other vegetation on earth, together with the wildlife, simply dies. But his most important message is for those who want to remain human. Those who wish to remain simply people will not take the devilish mark of the beast. They will not attend the spectacular concerts of the Antichrist. They will not go to the healing points or cabins. They will not accept the kind invitations to visit their ships. Because Slava said that UFOs will be openly landing together with the Antichrist. They will be inviting people friendly to see how it is inside. And by the time people get out of the ship, they will be already marked. And this is how Slavo put it in his own words. Those who live through the dark times, all the way through and reach the new age, they will not be special in any way. All they will do is simply decide to remain human. Слава тебе, Господи! Yeah.